Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Tyler McNabb, and in today's video, we're gonna do some powder coating. So in our last video, I took you guys around and showed you the whole process. I revealed that we're starting up a powder coating business. So I showed you the process of going through building everything up and uh, figuring out uh, exactly what we needed to do to get it set up. And so I believe at this point we are pretty much there. So we are going to see uh, what happens and uh, we're gonna try to powder coat our first part today. So flip you guys around here. We got the booth set up. Let's flip on some lights, get some nice, beautiful light going here. We have a uh, random part that we're gonna try to powder coat. So as you guys can see, uh, this is just like a random metal bracket that we had laying around, and so I figured uh, might as well, uh, for our first part, uh, just try it out and see what happens. So, i got it sitting on the rack here. As you can tell, it's still dirty. So, we need to get this thing sandblasted. I think Dad's going to take care of that. Uh, he's going to do the sandblasting, and then once we get it cleaned up, uh, we've got this new gun all set up. We need to get some powder in the hopper and uh, test it out. So with that, I guess uh, we'll jump right into it and uh, see how this goes. So let's do it. Okay guys, well, we have officially powder coated our first part and uh, pulled it out of the oven, let it cool down. So let's take a look. Walk over here to our rack and oh my goodness. This thing turned out pretty darn good. Just powder coated it in gloss black, nothing fancy. And uh, we'll take it off the hook here. And uh, let's go out here in the light or in the less bright light so you guys can hopefully see this a little bit better. But uh, let me know what you guys think. I think it turned out pretty good. I mean, it's glossy, that's for sure. I don't really see any major imperfections or anything. Uh, overall, I think it looks pretty good. So the footage may have been kind of all over the place because I was just really focused on making sure I was getting this thing powdered correctly. Uh, and all that so um, I just kind of had the GoPro set up and it it kind of does some funky stuff with the lighting because you got this super bright booth and then out here in the rest of the barn it's not quite as bright so it may have kind of been doing some funky stuff and then I set it up for a time lapse when it was actually flowing out in the uh, oven so I'm not sure how that turned out but we will see once I watch the footage but yeah um, relatively short uh, video there and so uh, probably what I'll do is I'll probably go ahead. Uh, I plan on all this week going through and testing some more parts. 
So I'll probably catch up with you guys a little bit later this week and uh, we're gonna do some different colors. We got all sorts of cool colors that I need to try out and I need to get some practice on like uh, double coats, clear coats, primers, uh, metallics, that kind of stuff before uh, we officially open up for business. So uh, I'll probably catch up with you guys in a little bit. Uh, it'll be a couple days from now, uh, but we will go ahead and uh, try some different powders and I've got some other random brackets and metal pieces sitting over there that we can uh, try to get powder coated. So I'll see you then. Okay guys, well, we've done a couple more parts in the booth and uh, a couple of them turned out pretty good and then another one I'm um, having a little bit of trouble with. So we're still learning at this point. Like I said, I've just kind of done some basic powder coating before, but now I'm trying, uh, we're trying to do this for real. So we want to get our machine and everything dialed in before we start doing uh, other people's stuff. So let me show you uh, what's going on. Okay, so you saw me do this white bracket next. This one turned out really good. Uh, I haven't seen any imperfections or anything, and uh, it got full coverage and everything. It actually looks really, really good. Next thing we did is I did this. This is actually a little uh, logo that my work gave me. Um, this is our work logo, and so I uh, decided to powder coat it for fun, see what it looked like. So it uh, turned out pretty good. looks pretty good, other than there's one spot on the back. We've got like a dimple here. Let me see if I can show you. You guys can kind of see that little black dimple there. Not sure what that came from there. Um, trying to figure that out. Could be some back ionization, not really sure. But overall, uh, this doesn't look too bad. Uh, I think it came out pretty good as well. This is with some like really old powder as well. So that could have something to do with it, but uh, not too bad. Then unfortunately what we have here is this subframe. So from a distance, it uh, probably doesn't look too bad. But uh, unfortunately, when you get a little closer is where we're having some issues. So I think part of my problem here is um, our ground. So I think I'm not having the greatest ground right now. And I think part of it is because this uh, cattle panel up here is actually galvanized. Um, it's not just bare metal. And so with that, uh, we probably need to make sure we're getting good quality contact between the parts and the hook and everything so overall not too bad on the top surface but where it gets a little bit ugly is uh let me go over on the back side here it's kind of back in here i'm not sure if you guys will be able to see it or not um yeah you can see there there's some bare spots a uh, couple in there that one isn't too bad uh, there's a good one down in there, and these are the hard places to get. They're what they are. What's called Faraday areas. So what happens is you have a real tight area, and that powder doesn't want to go all the way down in there because when it gets close to that, it ends up just sucking to the wall, or it sucks to uh, a, or it sticks to a different part instead of going all the way down in there. So we really need to play with it. So this is my very first uh, attempt, really. Uh, at a part with a Faraday area. So overall, not terrible. Um, you know, it's not the ugliest part in the world, but it is not something that I would want to, uh, you know, provide to somebody if they paid me to do this. So not good enough for a customer, but for now, um, yeah, it's a good first try. So we just need to play with it a little bit more and uh, see what happens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw that in the uh, strip tank tonight. We're just gonna go ahead, strip the powder off of it, and tomorrow I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna do a second attempt. We're gonna change some stuff on the gun, um, do a little bit more research tonight. Um, I'm gonna make sure we have a good ground going and uh, we're gonna retry this thing tomorrow. So uh, stay tuned because uh, let's see, hopefully we can get a little bit of a better coverage on this. Um, we'll see what happens. Okay. 
Okay guys, well, I uh, got the subframe stripped down and decided to go ahead and recode it. As you guys saw um, in the time lapse, we got that recoded and it looks a lot better now. So we got it sitting on the table here and you guys may think you see some imperfections in the powder. That's just the subframe itself. That's some imperfections in the casting. The powder itself, let me flip it to this side. It looks a lot better. Oh yeah, this side's a lot smoother. It looks really good. So the issues I had previously, uh, the problem areas were down in like these little crevices. And there's a couple like real fine bare spots as you can see. Um, but overall, it's a ton better than it was uh, the first time. So that's really good. What my problem ended up being was just uh, our ground. So I was right, the coating on this... Uh, this um, cattle panel material uh, was not letting, uh, basically it wasn't, uh, gosh, didn't have conductivity between the ground clamp and the parts. So after I ground the top of those uh, down, um, we have good ground going from our parts to our ground rod. So that's really good. So we got that. Now, next thing I wanna do is a couple two stage um, powders. So I have yet to do any two stage powders. So we'll see how this works out. I've got, I think it's lollipop blue that I'm going to do. And then I'm going to try an illusion orange as well. We've got just some, uh, as you guys can see behind me, uh, some old 400 EX air fins that I had laying around that were cracked that uh, we're going to try to coat those. So uh, let's try some two stage. Okay guys, well it is probably about a couple weeks later since I last uh, powder coated those parts and stuff. Um, been super busy, uh, haven't had any racing going on mainly because the quad was in pieces as you guys saw from previous videos and in the next video you guys will see it put back together um, as you guys can actually see in the background there. Uh, she's all back together. But anyway, um, so I wanna show you uh, the two stage parts that I did and uh, kind of tell you some of the issues we were having. So hanging up here is our two stagers that actually turned out really good. So this is a color called Illusion Orange. Super cool color. Um, something that's kind of cool about these Illusion colors uh, from Prismatic Powders is you shoot the first coat on and when you shoot the first coat on it doesn't look anything like this. It looks real dull and uh, not shiny at all. And it looks very rough and matte finish. Um, and it looks nothing like this color. Then what you do is you shoot a clear coat over it and it has a dormant pigment pigment inside of uh, the powder uh, of that base coat that um, once you shoot that clear on and bake it, it brings out this shine. And so uh, this is a pretty cool color. It's like a metallic-y kind of uh, orange, um, kind of cool. 
Um, here's another one. Don't pay attention to that black kind of in the middle. That was just because we did it super quick and didn't like fully prep the part. But uh, overall, that uh, looks pretty darn good. Um, not too bad there. So we got, you know, if I can hang this back up. So yeah, uh, those didn't turn out too bad. The other issues we were having, so I kind of put some text in the video as you guys saw. So I did the, um, actually it's right here, I'll show you. So I did this air fin in Super Chrome Plus as my base coat, and it actually turned out really good. Uh, don't, it's kind of dusty right now because it's been sitting around and there's a couple water spots on it. That's because I had to end up washing it off um, because it was covered in some stuff anyway. Um, Super Chrome Plus turned out really good. Then what I went to do is I went to put a transparent top coat on. So what a transparent top coat does is it lets the base coat show through. So what happens when you do that lollipop blue, it's probably if you just powder coated it by itself, it'd be kind of just a, a dingy blue, you know, nothing crazy. But if you do that super chrome base below it, that chrome shows through and it turns into kind of a candy blue um, is what it would turn into. So we are having some issues with that. I didn't end up trying it again because we ran out of the lollipop blue. Um, I didn't have enough to try it again. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was the issue we were having. I think what it turned out was it was a combination of our gun settings so we changed up our gun settings a little bit for that second coat. Um, also went through and um, turned our air pressure up a little bit to throw a little bit more powder at it. And then what we also did is I, just, I adjusted my technique so I was getting a little bit too close to the part. And so what that does is when I was getting too close to the part is it was overcharging it. And when the part gets overcharged very quickly, it actually rejects powder. So it doesn't wanna uh, take the powder and stick uh, to the part. So that was part of my issue there. Um, but anyway, um, this was my first time doing two stage coats. So, uh, we definitely don't have it perfect by any means, but, um, that illusion orange turned out pretty good. And so, uh, I think, uh, I think we're going to be, uh, set before we know it, be able to, uh, start doing some two stage coats. Um, I've got another one that I want to do that I haven't finished yet. I'll show you right here. Um, this is actually just an old Polaris wheel. Um, I did a zinc primer base coat and then I was going to do a top coat but I ran out of time because we were actually working on some customer projects. Um, so here's actually some right now. We've got some sprint car front bumpers in gloss black and then we've actually got we've got parts hanging all around the shop right now. We've got a nerf bar here. We've got a rear bumper there. Um, we've got another Nerf bar over there. We've got some more Nerf bars sitting over on the counter. We've got a rear bumper there. My dad's actually been working on those this weekend while I was putting the quad back together. So big thanks to him. Um, he's kind of learning how to powder coat too. Uh, originally it was kind of gonna just be me powder coating and he was gonna be doing some prep work, but we figured we kind of uh, both kind of work at it so that way we're both proficient in case something like this happens where I had to work on my quad to get it ready for the race. And so he's been uh, powder coating uh, the sprint car parts uh, for a buddy of mine. He's actually uh, going to be our first paying customer. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so those turned out pretty good. He did a pretty good job on those. Um, so yeah, with that, um, I think that's gonna end out our video for the first uh, parts uh, powder coating video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, I actually powder coated something else, but you guys are gonna see that in a separate video. Um, it'll actually be the video after this one. You guys will see that. Um, I'm looking right at it right now, but that was a cool project. Took me a lot of getting used to. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you in the next one.